Okay, so this mini vlog is going to be dedicated to the topic that has really dominated the world, the world stage, um, and that's what's going on in Libya. Um, I could have told you all along that this was the plan. And anybody who really researched what was going on in Libya during the fall of the Gaddafi regime um, could tell you. Uh, I mean, if you really read, read into it and you really studied not just the mainstream media explanation of what was going on, that um, these, you know, freedom fighters, these rebels took down Gaddafi's forces, that it was the people of Libya that were taken down Gaddafi, um, brutally murdered him in the streets. Um, and I'm not saying Gaddafi is a great guy. Um, uh, believe me, and I'm not saying he was supported by his, uh, his country. Um, I mean, he ruled with an iron fist, but, um, the narrative that the U S media and the U S government is giving the people on what happened in Libya and what happened in Egypt and so on and so forth, um, is really a, a distortion of the truth of what's going on in Libya and what went on in, in Egypt. And, um, you know, what happened in, at, at the embassy, they're saying that it's because of uh, a movie um, basically uh, trashing Islam, uh, and trashing Mohammed. Um, and of course, they're going to tell you this. They're going to tell you, um, they're going to, and when I say they, the media, which is the mouthpiece for the U.S. government um, and for various other governments that support this action, um, the action of military intervention in the Middle East to take control of their land, to take control of their resources, and to install public, public governments that support our agenda and the agenda of other countries that we're allies with. Um, it's to create this narrative that there's this, you know, Islam versus Christianity battle. Um, it's used by the right all the time um, to justify U.S. military intervention because it's like a holy war um, that the that the, uh, that the uh, Muslims are out to kill us uh, Christians, or I shouldn't say us Christians, but as a Christian nation, the United States, they're out to uh, to get us. So uh, they're propping up this idea that it's because of this movie. They're saying that it's elements of Al-Qaeda or Al-Qaeda so groups uh, that support Al-Qaeda in the fight against the U.S. occupation and U.S. Uh, intervention in the Middle East and the support of Israel over Palestine, so on and so forth, as the normal narrative has gone. Um, but what a lot of people do not, and I'm sorry for my shaky camera work, but I have a Wi-Fi connection here at work and I can upload this real fast, but what, what a lot of people don't realize is that the United States backed the rebels that were fighting against Gaddafi. And yeah, uh, that aspect we know. We know that we supported him and that NATO supported him. And we know that about 90% of NATO is the United States government and the United States military. Um, so we were carrying out the bombing of, of Tripoli and so on and so forth. But what a lot of people don't realize is that elements of al-Qaeda were in those rebel groups. The uh, NATO commander, uh, NATO commander James... I can't remember his last name. It starts with an S. He came out in testimony in Capitol Hill saying that there was a flicker of um, Al-Qaeda um, forces in with the rebel groups. But yet we continued to support him. So, yeah, and we also know that Gaddafi was very much against Al-Qaeda, was fighting Al-Qaeda forces, keeping them out of Libya, out of the key cities like Benghazi and Tripoli. We know that he teamed up with George W. Bush during the early 2000s um, in the fight against the war on terrorism. And then all of a sudden now he's an enemy because of this idea, and there's no real proof of it, that he was going to murder or going to slaughter his own people. 
it's been propped up by the U.S. government. It's been propped. This story has been propped up by the U.S. media with no real evidence to support the claim. So, in the span of literally four years, three years, Gaddafi came was a, a, a well-known friend to the United States government, the CIA, and all of a sudden now he's an enemy. Now, if we are now looking, I mean, obviously Libya has been an on again, off again enemy of the United States. It's the way it's always been, and it's just like Bill Hicks says, you know, we uh, we're like Jack Palance in the movie Shane. It's like pick up the gun, pick up the gun, uh, sir. I don't want to, you know. I just want to. I'm just, you know, I'm a lowly sheep herder. Pick up the gun, grabs the gun. He shoots him, Jack Palin shoots him, says everybody saw it, he had a gun. So the United States government supported the rebels that were known to have Al-Qaeda ties, which goes against the whole narrative of 9-11 and Al-Qaeda's our sworn enemy, which is the official story that the government puts out. So you have um, the rebels taken over, the rule in Tripoli and the rule in, in several cities and in, 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 uh, in, in key hold cities in, um, in Libya. Um, and with the help of Pepe Escobar, independent journalist, he came out and said um, that uh, the military commander in Tripoli or in, 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 in Libya, in Tripoli, was a, uh, a, a, a Al-Qaeda asset. So you know that al-Qaeda has taken a stronghold in Libya since the fall of the Qaddafi regime because he's fought against them for so long. So when I read the other day that, that this, this had happened in Libya on the 11th anniversary of September 11th, I know that this was staged. This was created. Um, these terrorist groups, these people, probably were not there before the fall of the Qaddafi regime in which the U.S. and NATO... Um, had, uh, had carried out and created regime change, much like the regime change in Egypt, in which we supported Mubarak for 30-plus um, years, and then he gets taken out of power, and now the Islamists come in. It's a stronghold, and they're attacking U.S. embassies. You have to remember... The United States government needs an enemy. The military-industrial complex needs an enemy to fight in order to keep these wars going. You can't continue to bomb countries, although you can because the American people continue to just allow it to happen in the case of the drone attacks in Pakistan and Yemen and our CIA involvement in Somalia where they say al-Qaeda is located. You can't continue a war without an enemy. And because now Bin Laden, the, the, the boogeyman, is, is dead apparently, with no evidence, might I add, the um, United States needs a go, uh, an enemy to fight. And hey, guess what? They've created more enemies. They've created more turmoil. See, the intention all along was to create um, a, a, a destabilized um, situation in the Middle East. It's always been for our government. It's never been about liberating people. It's never been brought about bringing democracy. It's about creating more wars and more opportunities to fight wars. Um, it's the neoconservative agenda. It's the project for a new American century, which continues under Obama. Um... Now we have protests going on in Iran, which the United States are obviously the targets of those protests. You have the people in Iraq wanting the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, which is the size of the Vatican, um, to be shut down. It, they've created turmoil, and that's what they've wanted all along. The U.S. government has wanted this turmoil all along to continue these wars to go. So now that we're coming up in an election, are we going to, is the American people going to, are the American people going to go with Barack Obama, who has been kind of weak on Iran in a way, um, not as strong as some 
new conservatives and Republicans want, or are they going to go with somebody who's really wanting to go to war um, and made it known, Mitt Romney? Could this be be playing out because of the elections? Because they're they're saying we need to protect ourselves. Um, and Barack, and then there's the wackos who will continue to spout that Barack Obama is a Muslim and blah 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 blah. So you have to look at all these cases. You have to connect the dots. And I don't want you people out there in YouTube land to blindly go along with the government tells you. Research the facts. Research what happened and why we went into Libya. Um, and research who we aligned ourselves with. Because Americans just don't they, don't, they don't research these things. They don't look beyond what the mainstream media tells them. And the truth is, is that we aligned ourselves with Al-Qaeda. We invited this. We created this. And this has always been the, 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 the agenda, is to destabilize the region, to create more wars, to create, well, create more enemies in order to create more wars. As our naval ships head to Libya with uh, Tomahawk cruise missiles that will likely kill uh, innocent people if used. Just stop, stop and think. Here comes the train. <laughs> stop and think, people, for a minute of the facts. The government needs a, an enemy to fight in order to keep these wars going because the support form continues to die. I mean, we've got Sir, uh, um, Syria, in which they're they're they're, they're claiming that the, the regime is slaughtering people. You know, and they're calling for the United States to get involved with that. So we're on the brink of some real heavy shit here, folks. And don't think it's all coincidence that all these countries are now all being destabilized because it's 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 created. And the more you research it, the more you'll understand. That's it.